Today let's go over installing our AM32 software as well as the downloading sequence. So it appears that some people have been having issues with their AM32 software, so I would like to show you the options that we have and some of the things that I think are going wrong with downloads. Now, I can't guarantee that it's always gonna work for all Windows machines, but for some reason, I think I know what's going on. So right now we're on the homeshobbies.com webpage and we are on the Crawlmaster HV. You can also go to the Crawlmaster V3 product and we scroll down and right here, Homes Programmer and Firmware. I've got all your files located in one position, one place. So we're gonna click on that. This comes up here into the file system. So we've got the ESC config tool 1.82 is what we have as well as the Crawlmaster V3 AM32 programmer driver. We also have the driver down here for the FTDI friend. If you're using the HV or the V2 model, that's what you're gonna use. And for the Crawlmaster V3, you're gonna use that driver there. So you wanna download both of these guys. I've already done that. And we are going to look in the folder unfortunately you're not gonna be able to see what i'm doing here except for on the overhead camera so there we go i've got these downloaded now i am gonna pull these to the desktop so i've pulled the driver to the desktop as well as the zip of the esc config tool the biggest thing that you need to do when you install these is to right click and run as administrator. So I'm gonna right click on this driver. I'm gonna run as administrator. It's gonna ask me, do you want this to make changes to the device? Yes. There we go. Select driver install. Again, you're probably gonna only see on the overhead. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We are going to install. There we go. Boop, 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 boop. It is pre-installed in advance. Fantastic. All right, now ESC config folder, right click, extract all. I do not recommend that you leave this folder in your download folder. Go ahead and pull it onto your desktop or some other place because all the files are gonna run from within that folder. And if you install it or if you unzip it into your downloads and then you move it, it may not work. I've seen this happen multiple times. So wherever you pull that zip file to and you extract it, that's where you need to run from all in the future. So here we go. We're going to open up the ESC config. Again, you're going to have to look at the overhead camera here because Windows doesn't like recording itself when you're doing file browsers. So now we go into the ESC config tool. There we go. Double click and we go down to the serial port connector that is our exe file again right click run as administrator this doesn't need to happen on all machines but this is probably your problem if you're having issues with it do you want this app to make changes yes and dun, 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 dun. boom it pops up all right so our multi esc config tool has popped up here what we see is the stuff at the bottom of it sorry i gotta scroll it is what it is and what we're gonna do first is we're gonna make sure that this thing sees our serial port adapter and we'll also need a battery to boot up our ESC. So first things first, I'm plugging this guy in. This is a V3, so your serial port adapter is included in the package. There we go. And we want to select the port. Hey, COM3 popped up. That's a really good start. And we want to select direct connect and we hit connect. Boom, it worked. Now I need a battery. You get a battery, you plug it into the ESC. And when we hit M1, it should connect. There we go. So to recap, if you're having issues, make sure that you, when you download the zip file for all of these files, that you pull it into a location that you're gonna run it from before you unzip it. Also, run it as administrator. Every time you open that EXE, run it as administrator. When you install any files for your drivers, 
run it as administrator and that's always going to help this is a windows 11 machine i've run it on windows 10 windows 7 pretty much everything and it works so now you can see we read all the stuff on here and we're good to go we can change settings if we want to we really don't need to change any settings but we could and that's that now if this doesn't work for some reason or you want another option what we can do is let's see i actually need chrome on this to do it you can go to am32.ca let's see i don't have chrome on there but we can try the microsoft edge it's probably not going to work am32.ca with this if you can select a device on there and it's easier to do this on chrome than edge then you can actually use this interface to do your programming from but you have to be able all right so i did port select it wants to connect i let it connect okay okay and then if i hit connect is it gonna let me on edge it's connected to the device so you don't even have to download that if am32.ca works for you that's interesting that it let me do that in chrome you have to enable your browser to be able to talk back and forth with usb so to recap really quick what i did is i selected the port it asked me do you want to be able to see it yes sir i do it's already connected then i will i'll disconnect now and i will connect again you got to have the battery plugged into your ESC just like the normal one. Boom, it connected. Now we can go into con the configurator. And it's all the same stuff. It's laid out a little bit differently here, as you can see, but it is all the same stuff. And you can use your browser. But you do have to be able to have your browser see the USB device and work. So you'll still have to install the drivers. And I would personally recommend not using the browser, but you can do what you want. And let's see, once we have the settings as we want, let's see, let's just change the motor KV a little bit to 2060. We're gonna flash the firmware. No, 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 we're not gonna flash the firmware. We're gonna save configuration. Yep, yep. Oh, I see, I see. No, 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 doing it wrong still. Apply configuration. Sorry, I don't use the website. There we go. Oh, no, that's also not what we need. There's a, it's in here somewhere. It's in here somewhere. Where do we send? Tune. Yeah, it's got melodies. Anyway, at any rate. Flash, send default, apply config, save. There it is, it was hiding. I just needed to go over. There we go. So if you have changed settings and you wanna make sure that they get applied, then what I do is I disconnect and then I reconnect. So, it's already saved. I'm guessing I didn't get a heads up like I would normally. So we're going to disconnect. We're going to reconnect and we will see if it changed our motor KV. Yep. It saved our motor KV. So once again, that save button, that's the one we're looking for to save our settings. Otherwise we can save our config. Let's just try it. ESC number one, we're going to download. Oh, we're going to download. We're going to try to download. <laughs> and I just use the software. Huh? You know, I may have downloaded it eight times now. Well, it's not letting me download. So, oh, well, maybe that feature doesn't work on this particular browser. So there we go. I hope that helps as far as getting this running to recap. You want to download the files from our repository, you can go to the Crawlmaster HV, you can go to the Crawlmaster V3, there are the links on that. You can even probably search Google for it and it might come up. 
Then when you download, you need to run those EXEs as admin. When you unzip your files, make sure that you have set those files in the location that you want them to be used from. Then you unzip, then you go into it and you will run as administrator as well. Once you do all that, all your files should be good and be sure that you do install your drivers before you try to do any of this. And that's that. So I hope that helps. If you do have specific questions, leave them down below. And if all else fails, you can always use am32.ca, but you'll still have to have those drivers installed. So one way or another, you'll be downloading files. There you go. Hope that helps for you. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.